Hello. <coughs> Guys, shush. Puppy, shush. Shush, okay? I'm just checking to make sure everything's good. Shush your dog face. Today I'm making um, a chicken soup and a beef stew because I made five dishes yesterday. And uh, yeah, hopefully everybody's having a good day here as we, uh, we all just try to get along and take care of each other. Not sponsored. Hi dog dog. All right, let's get some beef going here. So I got this pan out because I'm gonna brown beef in it and then chicken. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get beef stew going in that. So I'm gonna start with a bunch of, I'm not making stock from scratch, that's crazy. Go to Bon Appetit if you wanna see stock from scratch. They do amazing stuff. I'm not a professional chef. I don't have that kind of, well I do have that kind of time. I just don't wanna do it. Um, I like to put my own salt in, so this is the no salt added broth. I'm taking their word for it that this is made out of beef. I mean, for all I know, this could be like, I don't know, whatever. It's probably mechanically separated. It's probably like asses and elbows out of the cows is what they make the broth out of. That's fine. I don't care. So if you can track, this is, um... 2.7 liters of liquid. I don't know what that is in gallons because I'm not an American. I'm Canadian. Ask me anything about Canada. <laughs> ASMR. If you're like, you're making a crazy amount of food. Yeah, no, I am. I'm making it for me and my stepkids and my ex-wife. Because, um, unsurprisingly, perhaps, none of them cook except me. Anybody who knows me is not going to be surprised by that. Alright, so this is some leftover cauliflower from yesterday. Uh, this, uh, these soups are going to have cauliflower and broccoli in them. I've already done some broccoli for, uh, for the soups. They're going to have, they're going to have tons of vegetables. They're going to have carrots, lentils, uh, the lentils are going to go in the chicken. Um, broccoli, cauliflower, and if any of my family don't like it, they can pick it out. Trying to keep a better eye on the chat but today. Like I missed some questions yesterday because I was cooking and extremely tired. So we'll see what we'll see. I don't know what the deal is with this camera. I don't know what the frame rate's so bad. I think it's just because it's an old camera. I am also running this off a Surface laptop, so not the Surface, not the actual Surface, like a Surface Pro. Um, and. Uh, this would become a regular thing for me, I'd bring one of my PCs out here and run it off of that. It'd be way more capable, way more RAM. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Hello dog, did you come for some new cauliflower? Can anybody see you? How about we bring you, let's bring you over here. I don't know, i got to go with the camera. Okay, are you pretty? Move the camera. Sparta, come over here. Sit. Sit. Oh, they can't get to see you. <gasps> Look how pretty you are. There's a cauliflower. You ate yesterday. Are you gonna eat that? That is that is some world class pickiness there, you little asshole. 
Mr. Kerr. So you drop that, you're not getting anything else. Eat the carrot. There's no meat. You're not getting any meat. Eat your carrot. Jerk. Do you like carrots? I don't know why you're being a jerk about this. It's because you're on mixer, that's why. Alright. Get the rest of it. Okay, get out of there. Come on, go. Go on. Spoiled dog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Oh man, I'm so tired. Cats didn't let me sleep last night and I was kind of wound up. It's a weird world, man. Like, yesterday, was it yesterday or this morning? I don't even remember. Um, The Who has found evidence that animals can contract coronavirus? Oh, jeez. Okay. I, I, unless my kid is actually watching me on Mixer as I'm talking to my dog, I don't know why he's texting me this crap right now. Maybe it's. Because if he is watching me on Mixer, he should get in the chat and say something. Little asshole. So yeah, where I live in Alberta, uh, schools were just closed today. I guess it was today. Was it today or yesterday? It was yesterday. I don't remember. Everything seems to be a big blur. Um, Be there a second.
I gotta get to cutting some vegetables here, man. There he is. Oh, nice, exciting, and terrifying. Yeah, I went to my gym. My gym's a. I've been studying contrast the last two days. My gym is a like a trainer gym. So there's only 10 people in this massive space at any given time because you can only work out with a trainer. So there's an, it's just not it's not randos standing there watching you work out. Just partially my preferred. And also, it's nice to have somebody like whose only job is making sure you're doing it right. You know, that's I think worth the money. Um, and, you know, there's conversations and emails from them about what they're doing to keep the gym as sanitized as possible, and what processes they're following, and those processes are modifying as they go. Um, like, they're no longer offering towels or water cups like you have to you have to bring your own towels and your own um, your own water bottles which you should be doing anyways um, just to help stem things right my yoga studio this is why I'm not gonna go to yoga for the next little while uh, they're not doing any of that I mean they're they're sanitizing the, as best they can but at the end of the day a really small space with 20 to 30 people getting sweaty in it, you know, and all breathing the same air. So I don't envy them in this at all. These are some hard choices that these companies are going to have to make. Hello, cat. I don't know if anyone's gonna see you. They might, as you slink by. I actually don't know why you're out here. You were just literally asleep. And you don't get treats. That big cat, big goofball cat, is a uh, big boy. He's a 25 pound British blue. And, uh,. Taking him in this week to get his teeth looked at because they're all gonna have to come out. I've already done this with my tiny little gray cat who's like five pounds. Yeah, it's just one of those things, man. Like, what are you looking at? Why did you fall down? <laughs> See, you're a star again, Sparta. This shitty fucking wet man. It's the same model webcam, just one's newer, one's older. That one's doing fine. It might actually be the cord, too. I'm using a USB extender um, to micro USB and it may just be not connected. Maybe it's a pretty cheap extender. Because, to be fair, I didn't really think about having it set up in my kitchen ever, so. My tiny kitchen. Like, my dining room area is the same size as the kitchen, which is crazy. I would rather have a tiny dining room than a big kitchen. I think I'm cutting a lot of celery for this. Uh, that's because I'm making six liters of soup and stew. There's not uh, no small thing. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. An imperial. It's, what is this? This is. Well, 
do not understand measuring things in like quartz and gallons. You can just go, I would like everything to be in a factor of 10, please. Factor of 10. One cup is 250 milliliters. Which is one quarter of a liter. That I understand. Like this is 355 milliliters. So a can of Diet Coke is a cup and a half almost. That I understand. But I would like, I'd like to buy something that is five hands tall and 65 stone, whatever the fuck that means. You faking me with a notification there, phone? No. Deli containers got me. So I'm making six liters. And that's 24 cups. Oh man, yeah, that's a whole sleeve of, uh, of one cup deli containers. That's like the whole order. I think I ordered, how many orders? I ordered 48, right? 48, so that's half of the sleeve. to Alberta with fresh produce comes from New Zealand and we don't grow it ourselves because we are inhospitable to humanity other than grains and livestock like it is virtually impossible to get a good apple out of this province because we don't make good apples. We don't make tomatoes. We don't make lettuce. It's a bummer, man. I just cooked for like four hours. Like, why didn't I do anything? Well, yeah, because I was cooking. I like cooking. I don't know if I could do this as a job. I thought about it. It's like anything, right? Like once you do something, Take something you dig and turn it into a job. Like, <laughs> then it's like, then that kind of that love affair where they kind of get beat up, right? Except for some few people who are truly um, privileged and lucky to do something that even when it's a shit show is a love affair that's fulfilling, you know? Been trying to figure out what to do as a job because like I've done a ton of jobs right and I'm kind of good at pretty much anything I do but humble brag but like um, do shit to just just to get by and support my ex and the kids. Time's done. Like, time is 
It's not for me. I mean, well, you know, so I've got to make a living, right? You got to be satisfied. So, I don't know. I was studying emergency management. I really enjoyed it, but at the time, it felt like a uh, solution to a problem. And my wife at the time did not want to leave this province and leave her job. So I needed to find meaningful work in a different career um, stream. I didn't find what I was doing to be meaningful. So then and I thought, okay, this is very much in my skill set as a problem solver. And, uh, and I still believe that to be true, but after you know, my life imploded last summer, last spring, Kind of was like, okay, this is the thing I'm doing because it's a choice I made because of my acts. Do I actually want to do this? And that's something I've been chewing on for eight months. But with this pandemic, you know, like the the halfway through the course so the information the knowledge I have which is rudimentary and you know um, entirely based on the accreditation I was pursuing definitely put me in a headspace of like this is this is, I think where I'm coming to yeah I actually do want to do emergency management I, I do it is, uh, is absolutely meaningful work. Um, we are headed into a period of time where, uh, you know, with climate change and, and pandemics and disease, and this kind of work is going to become more needed, not less. And uh, it's, yeah. Just being able to help people, like, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a paramedic, who's a permanent resident in this country, but he also works in the United States, he's an American, and he, uh, he just goes to work, you know, I don't know how many how often he does, but it's sort of a part-time gig, but he's on a truck in, in the States, and I said to him, we talked on the phone, because, you know, like, this is a week ago, and we were both pretty confident, which kind of bore fruit today, that the borders were eventually going to be closed into Canada, um, and it would affect him. And, you know, so we were talking about how he would, uh, things he could do to help. And I, you know, and, and like when you look at other developed nations. Uh, even ones with universal health care like Canada and there was the surge of coronavirus like it's a whole, all hands on deck situation man like everybody who's got medical um, training is going to be needed even if it's just like literally and this is what I said to him and he agreed even if it's just driving the bus like driving the truck like at the end of the day, there's only so many first responders and health personnel, you know, and they're going to get tired and they're going to be the first people to get sick, no matter what. And so, if he's able to, like, you know, hopefully he did, I don't know if he did or not, but call the uh, emergency response units in his jurisdiction where he lives, and offer his assistance as a volunteer, then then he's he's able to help, right? They had no onions at the grocery store. They just had these. Which are fine. They're pearl onions. I'm not gonna actually pearl with those right now. Let's get the patats going. I got my water going here.
Yeah, I should have cut the broccoli smaller. Oh well. So I'm gonna be brown. You can't see it. Go. <laughs> well. Do you want a piece of broccoli? Can I interest you in a piece of broccoli? Are you gonna just gonna stare at me? Come on. Eat your Skin on in the, in the stews because, like, one's a stew, one's a soup. Because, um, like, for real, I like skin on potatoes. I don't know why people peel potatoes. Just wash the skins, man. Get the dirt off. Be like, yeah, don't even worry about washing them too bad. People like it. Well, dirt never hurt nobody, except for E. coli. This province is in so much trouble right now. It's going to be an interesting six months. Alberta is an oil province. 
And, uh... <laughs> hey, Mitch. <laughs> My boy Mitch is uh, apparently watching the feed. Shout out to Mitch. Be nice if my friends would speak up in the chat. Get in the chat. <laughs> Anyways, my dog did not eat that broccoli because my dog's a jerk. All right. Hey, shout out to Mitch, actually, man. Like, Mitch is, is my boys from Alabama and. You know what? He's a good cat. And he's fucking, he's in the health field, dude. So, if you, if you got people in your life that are in the health field, if you have people who are, like, work at a grocery store or deliver food, give them props, man. Even if they're, like, for fuck's sake, tip people. You know? Like... <laughs> Apparently he's my friend Mitch is on the X bone. And that is why he's not engaged with chat, which is fine. I respect. Nothing but love. But yeah, like I was saying, like motherfuckers come into your door with your food, tip that guy. Tip that woman. Or that person, I should say. You know? Like Nobody, almost nobody has the privilege I have, because I was laid off a few weeks ago, and I was given a very, uh, I was given, I was able to, let's just say I'm able to not work for several months, at least, and I have other circumstances that are going to make things, I'm not going to be in the kind of straits that most people in this country and in other countries in the world are going to be in um, financially, no matter what. So that's a huge privilege of my part, and I understand that. And it frees me up to do stuff like, you know, make fucking content on the internet and stream me cooking for my family. But, like, I've done the gig economy before was the gig economy, man. Hustling, as long as you're not hurting anyone else, there's nothing wrong with hustling for work to make ends meet, man. You got to take care of you. You got to take care of your family. You got to do what you got to do. So take care of those people because there's nobody is going to take care of us except us, right? That's just that's just it, man. And if you're in a position of privilege like I am. Reach out to everybody around you. I have friends of mine who are comic book artists that a good chunk of their income is going to conventions and getting commissions. And that ain't going to happen now, you know, for at least six months. So, you know, first I said, hey, what can I throw you? And they're like, you know, they got pride. I like, don't worry about it. And then they had a bunch of commissions open up. And I was like, I'm buying some commissions, dude. You don't get to say no. Because, like, I can. You know, we got to take care of each other. Like, I've never been, <laughs> since 2016, I've never been more aware of how much of a privilege and... pride it is to be Canadian and how much we have to be grateful for and as much as we can bitch about our governments um, these are the times where like people ask what the difference between Americans and Canadians is I want well I'm gonna tell you right up gun control is the number one gun control and universal health care are the two main differences but more fundamental than that Canadians do not have I mean there's exceptions to this. Alberta is, generally speaking, a good exception to this. They do not have an inherent mistrust of the government that Americans have. And I actually don't 
I've never done, I haven't investigated as to why Americans innately mistrust their government. Um, given, especially the last 11 years has been unfettered economic growth in the United States. Now, don't get me wrong, the U.S. is all also fucking up on a ton of policy in terms of taking care of its people. But, I just don't get it. I mean, whereas in Canada, because government is so... This is probably, I should find out, from any U.K., Australian, New Zealand, South Korean, Israeli, blah, 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 Germany, most of Europe, I guess, Italy. I should find out ask the question, like, is trusting your government tied to the fact that your government is providing health care? Like, is that, is that the innateness? No, though, I have nothing for you. You can come over here and look pretty if you want, but it's much more comfortable over there. This, this is not for you. This is potato. You can't have any of the potatoes. Okay, doggos cannot eat potatoes. Yeah, I really wonder if it is. I really wonder if it comes down to like, I'm paying an insurance company for my health care to fuck the government. Whereas in Canada or Europe, like the government is directly responsible for keeping my health. So they better fucking know what they're doing. I don't know, man. I don't know. Just about nick my. If this had been a sharper knife, I would have got a cut right there. Let's not do it yet. I gotta cut up the shit first. Cut the meat first. Back to that. So we're gonna retire this knife for a second. We're gonna bring out the meat cutting board. Really should have just some gin in that pathway, but it's a bit too early. Dishwashers I've ever had in my life. They do what you got. Oh, you son of a bitch. My stepdaughter got me this knife. I bet you it needs to be sharpened because it went to my knife. Pretty nice. When I, <laughs> when I went to the store, so this is flank steak, which is like the cheapest cut of steak. Oh, one of the cheapest cuts of steak. When I went to the store, this was all that was left. Was grass-fed Australian Angus beef. Never tried this. I guess we'll find out. And what's weird is it's actually not much more expensive than regular Canadian beef. Globalization for the win. What are you doing? Do you know it's like a million times too early for anything? I have no idea how I like created this monster where every time I do stuff here with a knife you want you want something from me. But that was not my intent. Australia. Let's see what you're 
just like this is vacuum sealed all the hell. Go lay down. Good. I no, you're fine. You're a good girl. Go lay down. You you unless you're gonna sous chef, you need to go lay down. Nice color. It's a really nice color. Smells like beef. I should use the bigger knife for this, but I don't want to cross contaminate. Just grab some of this fat. Okay, so you see how, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but like, the meat threads are going this way. So you want to cut the beef this way. And I'm cutting this into reasonably small pieces. Definitely picked the wrong knife for this, but that's okay. Hey, if you're thinking of me at Christmas, I could use another chef's knife. Just as an FYI. <laughs> you go to, go to Amazon.ca slash cinematological. There's a wish list there. Of Blu-ray. Dog. Listen, get out of there. This is not for you. You do not get to raid the garbage. You see? Mm -hmm. Go lay down. Go lay down. This is not for you. I guess the question, a good question is, why are you using flank steak other than the fact that it was the only thing left available other than some halal strip loins? Because, like, um, this is a stew. Like this is gonna simmer for hours, right? Um, I legitimately think it's a waste of beef and money. Go lay down. To um, to spend that kind of money on on like to take a nice cut of meat and boil it or simmer it for two or three hours. That's a, that's a waste of a good cut of meat, man. Like, you save the good cuts of meat for, like, grilling. You know? And, uh, use the cheap cuts of meat that have lots of fat and lots of connective tissue. Like, this, oh, this is gnarly. No, I'm not into this at all. Um, Like this silver sand we gotta come off. Um, and this is your this is your simmering meat, because this is all gonna break down in the pot. You know, and all this fat will render out. Like, listen, if you're made of money, <laughs> you wanna use like if you wanna go ahead and sear off a friggin' tomahawk steak and then Cut it up and put it in your beef stew. Live your life, man. Live your truth. I do not want to do that. I don't have that kind of stupid money. I mean, if I had that kind of stupid money, I wouldn't be living in this apartment. <laughs> I would be living in a much nicer place. And probably not in this province. I'd be, you know... Like, everyone has dreams of what they would do if they were rich, right? I have untold dreams about what I would do with Red Rich, but I would definitely move back to Toronto because I love the Toronto, I miss Toronto, I regret leaving Toronto, and uh,
It is now completely unaffordable to live in Toronto. It's really going to be curious what all the knock-on effects of all this stuff is going to be, because like, the American economy shits the bed, which is possible. The Canadian economy will follow, which is word linked. Is it, you know, is it going to start changing everything? Is it going to, are we going to have a massive real estate market correction in these big markets? Is people, you know, sell off? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to find out. Basically salivating at the chance to try and if I let her rifle through the garbage, which I will not let her because that's uh, not great. I don't want to do that. Mr. Bones is now following. Sweet, sweet. Okay, there's our, this is going to get rinsed off or washed off and then uh, I'm going to use this for chicken shortly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, let's get this grill, this grill, grill, this pan ripping hot. This pressure thing out of the way. Okay, let's see if sure my kid is gonna see that I put. Uh, Everything I put into these dishes and be like, that's disgusting. One of my kids is very fond of, of saying, or she she used to be, she's not much anymore, but she used to be like, no offense, that's gross. I'm like, you can't. Saying no offense in front of it doesn't make it less offensive. Probably the only thing left at the grocery store is packages of whole peppercorn. Okay. So that bad boy is going to simmer, but I'm going to actually do the other one in the pressure cooker. Here, in a little bit. What are you doing? You being sneaky? You trying to do an end run? That's not okay. That's not okay at all. Alright, what does this say? How much water? Two cups of water. Wow. That's alright, so I'm gonna be seasoning this the hell out of this myself. Clearly. Oh, that's 
So I'm, when this gets ripping hot, I'm going to deglaze it with uh, with some red wine, which is going to get loud and smoky. See, Libby. What's the internet have to say? Mm. Pictures for the gram. Okay, we're hot yet? No, we're not hot yet. Mmm, we're starting to get hot though, I can smell it. Yeah, we're pretty close to ripping hot, let's see. Yeah, we're, we're getting there for sure. You know, like every freaking cooking thing on the internet, I'm not actually trying to cook with meat. I'm just trying to make it, trying to give it the most flavorful color, which is brown. Brown is the most flavorful color. Which is contradictory given what brown things we experience in our lives. How are we doing there? Get hot, damn you. There you go. How's this look? Still going, still going. Man, that other camera is. This camera is doing a great job. Like, this is awesome. It's just, yeah, I don't know what the deal is. It's probably an old camera. These are the Logitech HD 600s or something like that. Um, I like them a lot. They have really good image quality for a wet camera. This is going, these are just going to have cooking for everybody. Put it in too early. Like, can you see that? Like, <laughs> like super pleased with the way this looks. Just period. We all make mistakes. 
Like there's so much liquid coming out of these, like fat. Oh hey, my apartment, they're vacuuming in the hallway. That's gonna be great. on the internet what are you doing yeah I'm streaming cooking on mixer yeah. thinking about it I'm, I'm waiting for WestJet to decide whether or not they're going to cancel the flight or not or, or change the dates because there's like I don't know six flights a day right so uh, if everyone's canceling then they'll have to start reducing all those flights so, I don't know. Why? Yeah. It's a week from Saturday. So, I, I, will, I, will, I will make a decision on Saturday. So. Okay. Yeah, go, go to, go to Mixer.com and log in with your Xbox account and then jump in the chat and say hi. Nice, nice. Okay. Bye. Okay, so like I said, this is going to get loud here because what I'm going to do is there's all this like brown liquid there. That's really yummy stuff, right? That's all the, that's basically all the water cooking out of this meat. Um, but I'm actually gonna normally you would take all the burny stuff at the bottom of the pan and deglaze it. I'm not gonna bother deglazing it, but this is gonna get loud. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm just boiling off the, the, the wine, the alcohol in the wine to add some flavor, and then this is all gonna go into there. But there's the amount of steam coming out of here. <laughs> if you've ever lived in an apartment, excess steam sometimes leads to smoke alarms going off. This apartment's actually pretty good about that. Like this exhaust fan is loud, but it's super effective. Okay, so this means it's gonna be tough as hell until it stews. But that's okay. Okay, let's season this stock, man. Season this soup. Get it simmering. It's interesting. Those are two markedly different colors. <laughs> How old this stuff is. Okay, 
So what's going to happen is that's going to simmer for a few hours. It's going to reduce. Once it's reduced, uh, then I'm going to um, throw in some cornstarch and um, thicken it up to make it more of a stew and less of a soup. interesting. My family the ones eating this so I don't care about putting my stew back in. Well that's missing everything. Okay. Sheet and we're going to throw in some garlic salt. So I've never <laughs> worked with pearl onions before, so well, let's see what happens here. Am I supposed to peel them or just wash them? I don't know. Oh, they're just like baby regular onions. Oh, this is going to get irritating fast. Yeah. in Alberta. I'm supposed to travel to Eastern Canada in like 10 days. And my kid is very wisely trying to find out if they still intend to go. I think he's a little bit freaked out, to be quite honest. I don't blame him. 
There's a lot of um, contradictory information out there. None of it good. Oh, that's a big lump of seeds, man. That's not good. That made me why I didn't taste anything. <laughs> tips out there? What do you like in your beef stew? It's just something I haven't thought of that I should throw in. Boy, if this, <laughs> if cleaning these must be, yeah, like, one of the shit jobs in the kitchen. This is tedious, like you wouldn't believe. I think I would like my role to be in the second half of my life as the guy who pays for creative people to do cool things. You know, occasionally does cool things himself, but... You know, like, why would I... If I wanted to start, like, a food truck, why wouldn't I hire someone who's, like, an exceptional chef and then just say hey what do you think about this this and this and see what they say right like they're the expert i legitimately think the, that there is a possibility in canada at least that you, Universal Basic Income Company is going to be part of the conversation in the next six months. Because if we fail to manage COVID appropriately, uh, it will hit every, almost every sector and it will dev devastate it. And then there will be questions of like, how do people make their rent? How do they... Get the basic necessities, you know? Like, I don't know, in the United States, I don't know how this is even a question. I don't even actually understand why it is a question. I don't understand why baby boomers and older are more concerned with generational debt than they are with their own health. Like, because generational debt is has never not existed in my lifetime at any level of government and I doubt it'll ever not exist. I don't think it's possible at this point to to actually in a way that is legitimate and ongoing say this government spends exactly what it takes in in tax revenue and resource revenue and meets all the needs of all the people and also has money in the bank in case there's an emergency. I don't think that's possible. When you look at, at least here, when you look at government budgets here, like 
you're always there's always this talking point of like, would you run your business like this? It's like, well, yeah, most businesses run <laughs> run debt finance. That's how they're able to. Um, most large businesses. That's how you pay investors with dividends and share buybacks. Is you take all your profits and put it into that, and then you debt finance everything else you have to do, like infrastructure, you know, projects. That's why, like, it's all illusory, right? Because if, if if you were to pass a regulation saying 50% of all profits must go to infrastructure. Um, investment in the local economy and prohibited 50% of it from going to stock buybacks, dividends, or any kind of investor um, compensation. Um, our entire economic system would collapse because that's how the rich stay rich. They stay rich by borrowing money to do what companies are supposed to do. The cost of doing business is done on borrowed money, and the profits are all funneled back into shareholders, hedge funds. You know, so like if you're 65 and you're facing COVID as an existential, even if you have the capacity to recognize it as an existential crisis, <clears throat> and you're American. Why is why is universal health care not the only thing you care about? Like, why is it even a question? How's it going to be paid for? The United States is currently paying for a fucking war that will never end. Like, stop paying for wars, or reduce paying for wars. You know. You know, the U.S. has a trillion dollar debt. How is that ever going to be repaid? You know, like. And the reason it gets away with having a trillion dollar debt is because it's got the single largest defense spending in the world, you know? The only country that comes close to being a military opponent on a conventional scale, not nuclear, is China. And they're massive trading partners with each other. Like, there's all this nonsense about how Trump has established you can go with... You can just go it alone without China. No, you can't. That's horseshit. Like, all the tariffs are in place. All that did was make shit more expensive for consumers. Didn't stop business from happening. The U.S. still has massive trade with China. So, like, that's a fairy tale. They didn't stop trade with China. They just imposed fucking... Tariffs, which is what people play, you know. Businesses and people pay tariffs. Government doesn't pay tariffs, and government doesn't see a dime from a tariff. It doesn't come back. I mean, it would be insanity for for Trump, especially, to even consider. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's things that bug him, like, you know, the allegations that China manipulates its currency, you know, is a long-standing thing. I mean, it's a freaking communist country, like, of course they do. But, you know, <laughs> Trump has, has holdings in China, personally, you know, which he's never divested himself of. But no, the United States is not going to stop doing business with China. You go into a Walmart or a Target, look at everything on the shelf and look at where it came from. None of that's made in the U.S., man. Like, I'm all for local economy. Like, if you want to support your local businesses, that's a great idea. You should do it. But don't labor under the illusion that you can get, you know, furniture for a hundred dollars from a local vendor, like you can't.
way to spend peeling those onions. About a year. Felt like a year. Doggo. You don't get... Is it every time I cut something? Oh man, that's what I've created. Every time I cut something, you're like, clearly that's intended for me. It is not intended for you. through the sidewalk okay you don't own the sidewalk you're being you know it's fine I'm glad you're protecting us you don't own the sidewalk okay hey hey you old dog can you relax it's not yours okay go lay down you're very tough People tell you that. Hey, people tell you how tough you are. I think it's very tough. Onion in there. Oh. I didn't even have green onions at the store, man. It was wild. All right, I like that color. Okay, let's try tasting this again. Can you guys see how, what that, how dark that is? It's a nice dark brown now. Come on, let me shut up it. There we go. Hi, Angel1649. I feel like it's missing something. What do you think it's missing? Well, you're not going to get tasted. Okay. okay. Feels like it's missing something, puppers. You're not getting any of this. I don't need dog treats for you. It's definitely salty enough. Out of pepper here. All right, all right, we're just gonna let this simmer. Turn it down, let it go. All right, okay, let's get on with the getting on with the um, tidying up, and then we're gonna do the chicken. Any questions? Jump in and ask questions, man. I'm in Canada. I don't know where you are. But that's gonna get washed. That's gonna get washed. Okay. Look at the pressure grip you're going here. kitchen pressure cooker it's a knockoff it's actually probably a Chinese knockoff <laughs> um, it's not it's okay it does the job yes I do have to get my baby some dog treats I agree normally her treats are well I'll give her a treat now, right now actually I prefer to give her you know Treats. Where's let's leave my vegetable knife? Can you, you can come in here. Can you come in here? Come on. Stop hanging out in the camera. Hey, Berta, I'm gonna give you something. Come here. There you go. Good job ducking. Good job, eh? 
All right, you on camera? I'm walking you. Okay, sit. Sit. No, sit right there. Sit. There you go. Good girl. There you go. You need that one. Good girl. All right, apples are good. You drop it. It's right there. I should have wiped the knife off. Because this tastes like onions. Dad, you gotta work. Come on. Go. Good girl. Next up, I'm going to be making a chicken soup. In the crock pot. Not the crock pot, in the, in the pressure cooker. It's going to go dramatically faster than the, uh, than on the pot simmering, that's for sure. But, in that case, I'm not actually trying to tenderize it because it's going to be, um, fully cooked chicken breast going in there. So I'm not, not, you know, I don't really, I like chicken thighs personally. I prefer chicken thighs. It's my favorite form of chicken delivery. But, um, my family's not a fan, so I'll give them chicken breast this time around. Washer with the dish because my dishwasher uh, struggles with things like cheese. Even though I had rinsed this plate off before I put it in the dishwasher, after I made nachos, it still fucking had dried cheese on it, which is a bummer. After I move, if I end up buying another place, fucking appliances are big on my. Uh, List for personal growth. I'm sure. Oh, How old do you think? Here's a here's a question for the chat. How old do you think my dog is? Who guesses here? Here's a poll question. How old is my beautiful dog? 
a big bark. super worried about cross-contamination with beef and anything else but they're safe and sorry chicken is yeah that's the thing like, i don't want to fuck around you know something now dude the worst thing that would be the worst thing in the middle of a covid pandemic i get i get myself salmonella poison that would be brutal off things man they don't work well like they're supposed to pierce this like aluminum on the inside and they barely do maybe i'm doing it wrong maybe i need to twist more no salt chicken stock okay so i'm gonna throw in all my veggies just because I want to see how much stock gets displaced. Because I don't want to overfill the pressure cooker. Because then it just won't, it won't pressurize. Oh, that one opened right now. Because there is a full line right here at the top. So. Uh, I'm going to put in, I'm going to do the chicken, uh, I still have the potatoes too, so, potatoes are only easy girl. Give me some more. Three cloves. I like garlic a lot, actually. Can you believe I'm single? <laughs> I'm actually single by choice. I met an amazing person right after my marriage ended. Not right after. Within months of my marriage ending. And, uh, like, I had no idea. I wasn't looking to meet somebody. And I met somebody. And then was like... I was a train wreck, and also didn't actually know I was a train wreck. And it just didn't work, man. And that was, that's fine, I mean, like, I wish, here's what I wish. I have no idea if I had not been a train wreck. Uh, if it had been, you know, later, if it had been now, if it could have worked out. No idea. Um, Probably not. Maybe. Who knows? But like, it wasn't fair. Like that was the thing. The thing I took away from it is like, it wasn't fair to me. It wasn't fair to her. And like, I should have known better. But I was just, just trying to get by, man. Thought I had my shit together. I thought I knew what I was doing. Did not. So then I decided I'd be moving to a different province. 
this spring, which is now potentially on hold. And then I was like, okay, I'm not going to date. I mean, you know, there's no point in getting involved with somebody if I'm going to leave. I mean, that's not fair. And if, you know, you're with somebody, it's only been a few months. And then you're like, yo, I'm pacing out. You can come with me or, or we're done. That's not fair to anybody either, you know? like minus 15 in Celsius here in the Alberta region in Edmonton but like it is hotter than hell in this kitchen right now just FYI if you want to send me all natural dog treats <laughs> Amazon.ca slash cinematological. <laughs> I don't know how people do this regular. Well, I mean, dude, it's your job, your job, man, but like. I guess you gotta hustle. Everyone's gotta hustle somewhere here. Like, this, that's Jesus Christ. Gotta do what you do to get by. I am super bad at self-promotion. That one was empty, which is hilarious. One thing that's really funny is I had a cat a long time ago, like 20 years ago, that, uh, from, I guess 17 years ago, that ended up going with an ex-girlfriend. That cat, man. Like, my cats are pretty smart. They don't, I don't know why they know not to do this, but they don't really get up on the kitchen counter, and they definitely don't get up on the stove. And I've had them since they were babies, and they've never been injured on a, on a, hot surface. So I don't know how they figured out not to walk on the stove. But my cat, my old cat Bogart, I moved into an apartment after I broke up. The first thing she did was walk on a hot stove and I'd take her to the vet. It was fine. She just left a little skin behind but like fucking cat man. She was a shit disturber. Like when you talk to people who are like don't like cats and they're like, well cats are demons, that's why I don't like cats. Well Bogart was a really good example of a demon. And this is before Harry Potter, so we didn't name her after Harry Potter. We named her after Humphrey Bogart. This sucks so bad. Like, oh. oh, I might have turned that down too much. Let's check in on um, the stew. Nope, it's still simmering, still going. You know, a lot of people, you know, in the days and weeks ahead are going to be stuck at home, you know, trying to take care of, that was my gut, trying to take care of, you know, the 
their families, trying to figure out what they can do. You can do what you can. Reach out to your neighbors, man. Like, even if you have a crotchety old bastard of a neighbor, reach out to them because that person may not be able to get groceries. You know, they might be afraid to get groceries. And if they're on a fixed income and they're, you know, old, they probably don't know how to use a delivery service. I mean, if you're symptomatic, like, don't, don't, don't go knock on their door and breathe in their face. Like, but yeah, it's, it never hurts to leave a note and say, hey, I live next door. This is my number. If you want to, uh, if you need something and you're afraid to go get it, and you don't have anybody who can go get it for you, just let me know. And I'll either get it ordered in, or I'll go get it for you. That's how you help. That's how everyone takes care of each other, right? Hello, you. You gonna need a drink of water? What are you doing in here? I don't believe I've triggered you to come in here, so because I'm simply or you're just curious. No, yeah, that wasn't an invitation, puppers. This isn't for you. You don't like onions. You yeah, you know what it is? It's because I'm rewarding you. You're the worst lately. So the answer to the question of how old is my dog? My dog's 13. She's a spry, beautiful 13. She's a little bit stubborn, but she is still, she's in amazing shape for a 13-year-old big dog. Like, kind of brutalized that one. All right. And if you're wondering why I'm peeling these pearl onions, it's because they didn't have regular onions in the grocery store. shows I wanted to go see this summer after I moved. Man, I'm supposed to fly to Eastern Canada in a week, week and a half. Something tells me that's probably not going to happen. Because the whole point, it was, a, it was a business trip. I was supposed to I was going to go try and meet with recruiters. And HR people and just lay the table of like, hi, this is my name, this is what I bring. I will be back in 45 days to 60 days, and I would like to talk about potential opportunities in the future. Just put my name in your head. And that's not going to happen. Like, I think things are winding up now, man. Give it a week. Give it 10 days. I'm I'm 100%. Um, not 100%. I am relatively sure that the airline will cancel my flight. Um, because if if in Canada the virus continues, which I don't see the reason why it wouldn't in this province, because nobody's paying attention to what they're being asked to do right now. Um, it's kind of like Texas. People are like, fuck yeah, fuck the virus, I'm, I'm tough, I'm not afraid of nothing. Yeah, well, you will be. Um, um, the, I suspect the government will just take stronger and stronger actions to limit travel. You know? 
and try to start financially securing things. This is why I think um, universal basic income is on the table because I think in 45 days time, like if we look at the timelines for Italy, um, China, you know, like if they're telling people to stay at home, I mean, there's a ton of people who can't, like, like I just got an Amazon delivery. You can tell that guy to stay at home? Like that's his whole job, right? So, it was so funny, when I went to the door, usually there's like, hey, we sign for this? And they're like, no, nah, you don't need to sign for this, don't touch my phone. I'm like, I don't want to touch your phone. Don't, don't breathe on me, I'm just going to open the door slightly. Okay. You know, respect. Okay, how many of these are rotten? No time yet. Only three. That's no time for nothing. Okay, back to peeling fucking onions, man. Okay, this is not for you. Here. You better eat that. Are you really gonna? All right. Oh man, these these fucking pro onions. Are the worst thing in the world. Next time I will forego onions to not have to deal with these.
What's funny is I don't actually watch a ton of streaming. Like, I watch my boy Brandon on uh, Mr. Binky. I watch him uh, play games, and Mitch is often with him while he's playing games. watch YouTube stuff. I watch a lot of cooking YouTube stuff. I guess unsurprising. Oh, I play drums, so I watch a lot of drummers. I, I, watching people play drums is incredibly inspirational to me. It's very soothing. Which I guess sounds, it probably sounds weird, but... It's like, I don't know. Watching people animate because I used to be an animator. It's like, like, oh, I know how that works. I know what you're doing. I know why you're making that choice. That choice feels right. It feels wrong. You know. Whereas I watch something that is just like completely, like, like for real. And this is, you know, I'm middle aged, so I'm not gonna get it. I fucking don't get YouTube culture around. Watching idiots do stupid shit um, and spend fuck tons of money. Like I don't, I don't get it. I don't like. Is it just, is it just FOMO? Like, is it just envy of like, look, look how cool this guy's life is because he gets to spend all this money on dumb crap. It's like so much more to life than that, man. Go watch somebody paint. Watch somebody make music. Watch somebody dance. Like, I would like to watch this guy get punched in the balls. Okay, well, you know, whatever floats your boat, bro. Is it the idea that you hope? Like, do people secretly watch this stuff and they're like, well, I mean, because it's not live, so it's like. <laughs> People are shit disturbers, right? Like, it's easy. Like, yeah, you, you can act like you have nothing to lose until you lose your nothing. Everybody's got something to lose, whether they realize it or not. Even if you're some kid, some like 16 year old living in your mom's basement, you got something you like that you could lose. And it's one of the like key lessons of being a parent. It's like, not to be punitive, but to be like, okay, let's negotiate here. Like, you have to learn as a child that. There are consequences, you know? Sometimes consequences are as simple as do you let your kid touch the hot soap? I don't know if you guys can hear upstairs rumbling around. Life in an apartment. Kids not in school. I think they've got a kid. So I have enormous sympathy for parents right now who are like, who have their kids home from school. It's like, what do you do? I mean, you try to hold them homeschool them, I guess. It's when they go back. It's not summer vacation, man. It's only March. Norway, the Prime Minister of Norway did this amazing press conference today where they, um, I mean, they kind of overdid it but with the with the props, but like the entire point of the press conference was they took questions from kids and they responded directly to kids about their fears. I was like, that's how you show leadership, man. Leadership is speaking to the most vulnerable of your population, not the most powerful. The most powerful take care of themselves, no matter what. Powerful 
people will always take care of each other. So once I get this incredibly tedious task done, because I already put garlic in there, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Then, uh, then I can cook this damn chicken breast. Throw in some potatoes. This is exciting for you to be on camera, but you've already got plenty of treats. Go ahead now. Good girl. We're gonna go for a stroll in like an hour or so. Alright. Cut some freaking potatoes out. so much mess. Camera's still going? Camera's still going. Okay. My dad's on a cruise ship in the Caribbean right now. We'll be docking in Florida sometime soon. And then tents come back to Canada in April. And I won't uh, bet on that, Dad. I would plan to stay at your condo in Florida. You're in a floating incubation chamber. So they will probably ask you to self isolate in Florida, which, knowing my dad, you will ignore. <coughs> shush! Sparta, shush! Sparta, shush! Chattering, my neighbors. So one thing about these doors is like you can stand outside for somebody's door. Because all pretty much all of the apartments, I think the kitchens all open up on the front door. So it's like if you're in the kitchen, you can hear what people are doing. weeks ago and uh, it's the first time it's happened since I moved here and uh, which is great but my dog's a rescue dog I got her when she was six from some guy I guess he had to move to Europe or something I don't know he did a great job hmm, of, of raising her but one thing about being a rescue dog she was an apartment dog so my beautiful dog, you know, we'll go to the bathroom for the most part when she's on a walk. She won't, uh, doesn't want to like to go in the yard that much. Even when I had a house. 
So it was interesting. It was like the day the fire alarm went off, I was in my office, which is a couple rooms down the hallway. And uh, she came, and I had my headphones on. And she came and sat beside me and looked like she was either feeling guilty or scared. And I was like, what's going on? And then she got up and she led me back out to the kitchen. And I was like, I don't know, what's the problem? And as soon as I got to the kitchen, I smelled smoke. And I was like, oh no, there's smoke. And literally two seconds after I smelled smoke, the fire alarm went off. And so I looked at the people at the hallway, in the open hallway, and the hallway, you could just, you could just smell smoke. Now, it smelled like, like a toaster smoke, like somebody had burnt something in the kitchen. But I got everybody out in like, I don't know, two minutes. Got the cats and the carriers. Got her out, and it ended up being a neighbor had burned some food. But what I learned is that my dog has been through a fire and knows what smoke smells like and knows what fire alarms are there and freaks the hell out when that happens. Ooh, this is gonna be close. <coughs> All right, let's get... Chicken going here, and then this puppy is getting done. <coughs> Normally, I would wear gloves. I literally have one glove left. I have to go buy more. Frosted chicken already. Oh, I thought there were two in here. Oh. I'm going to cook these guys really well. I'm going to go in and I'm going to stir everything and add some seasoning. Hello, Pavlovian machine. This is not for you. Polenia. I know your heart is broken every time I do that. You are absolutely not getting any rocket. Shits for two days. Hey. <laughs> well, Mitch, uh, yeah, man, I like to cook. Hey, War Safety, thank you for joining. 
Um, I, cookie's fun, bro. Go lay down. eat some store-bought um, chicken noodle soup here in a second. So the thing about this too, right, is uh, it's hard to see here, but I'm actually, so this is the fill line, and I'm about an inch and a half below that right now. Um, all of this vegetables that are raw, they're going to get out of their water as they cook, right? So like, if I filled it right to the top and then pressure cooked it, it'd just overflow. Unfortunately, lentils are not going to make it in, but I'm also going to deglaze the pan with some white. Nice Argentinian Pinot Grigio. If you're ever like curious about um, how do you know when your pan's hot, if you've got oil in it, like I've got oil in that, right? The whole, you know, is it shimmering thing? How would you know? <laughs> shimmering. It, basically, the oil actually starts to vibrate because it gets so hot. So it gets this kind of like, you know, slick refractory look to it. It'll also start to smoke a bit. They're really important thing is you can smell it like it, it it smells like oil is cooking or burning right like that's the thing you know i i started cooking when i got a family out of necessity and um because it was a budget thing i didn't have any money and you know, after cooking for 15 years for my family, you learn a few things. And the thing, the most important thing I learned is like, trust your senses. Like, it's not just taste, it's like smell, it's like listening. So you can see how it's heating up that the oil's starting to spread out of it. Because oil is viscous, right, to begin with. So when it heats up, it actually expands. Like everything does when it heats up. For the sake of expediency, I'm absolutely proud of the plan, the plan. Um, so this meat is not getting spread out as much as it should, but it's going into a stew, but I'm not, this isn't going on somebody's plate, you know, like it's going to get cooked down for sure.
Okay, so let's season these bad boys. The last of my black pepper. I have brown black pepper in the pantry, but I like cracked black pepper. And that's it for that. Right. I'm going to go get the stuff. Get the salt. Nope, not there yet. Close. Okay, so I'm like forcing the issue here, and I should just be patient. So, like you can see, it's leaving some shit on the bottom of the pan, I guess, kind of. Um, that's because, so it's a stainless steel pan, right? When it's, I would never cook eggs in this, but I would cook everything else in it because, one, it gives you a nice sear, but two, like when it's done, when it's cooked, I mean, it's nice and brown, it'll just release because it's got nothing left. But the reason it's sticking is because the sugars, in the meat, they're sticking to the pan because it's not cooked yet, like all the way through. Not all the way through, but on the surface. That's definitely going to get thicker. Okay, so that's better, right? You see how it's just coming up? That one's not. I rushed it on that side. That one's not ready. I wish you guys had smell of it and it smells great. So unlike the beef, right, there's not a ton of water coming out of this. It's because chicken breast is super lean to begin with, and I'm also cooking it at a super hot, high heat, which is the beef, I didn't get quite hot enough. So it, it ended up cooking instead of browning. And a lot of water came out. Oh yeah, so these are coming up nicely now. Still not, not as brown as I would like, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm not being super patient with this. Normally I would just like literally have a glass of wine and watch this stuff cook. But have to say about anything. The world on fire. Did I?
that's another thing. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not, but like, because it's an electric stove, it like ramps up and down in temperature, right? Like it, it basically, like you can hear the ballast going like, okay, make it hotter and then it cools off and then it's make it hotter again. So then the food, the sizzle of the food goes up and down with the temperature of the meat. So this one I'm definitely going to be deglazing. It's going to get loud and steamy. So just, just so you know. steamy part. Let's do this one at a time. Lang jangler there. Oh, you son of a bitch. There we go. Okay, loud. plume of steam. So the whole point of putting the wine in here is it's cooking out the alcohol, but it's also all this beautiful brown stuff at the bottom that's just like cooked chicken. It's tasty. So I'm lifting all that up. It's going to go in here and it's going to make the soup taste good. Oh, that smells great. super meditative. See, that's already reduced by half, so that's nice. Ready to go. Itchy dog. Right. Put this here. It smells awesome. I'm going to throw in some prepackaged seasoning. This is nowhere near enough for a, a, a soup this big. So I'm going to add my own seasoning. <laughs> Can I get loud and steamy? Is definitely the name of my sex tape. <laughs> no, the name of my sex tape is. There might be some crying. Don't you know? Don't judge. <laughs> salty enough. It's really salty. Holy crap. Mm. Oh man, am I out of time? I am out of time. 
All right, I'll be right back. So I need time and, uh, let me write this down for me. I need time and, um, whole, whole peppercorns. Just throwing in some more pepper here. I am actually going to add a little more liquid to this, I think. So, you know, cheers, cheers, cheers. That's a really good wine. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, yeah. So, this is cornstarch and the reason you thicken with cornstarch instead of um, flour is because flour, uh, the consistency of flour changes the temperature. So if you put in flour into a hot um, soup or whatever, it thickens it up. But as that soup cools, it gets like, like if you've ever seen a, anything that was nice and thick and then it congealed as it got cold, that's probably because it was thick of the flour. The one, <laughs> the one mistake I made that I learned late was when you're making a slurry to thicken stuff up, don't use hot liquid. <laughs> this is cornstarch. Like you don't want lumps, right? So cornstarch, if you put hot liquid in cornstarch, it just turns into gel. And you get these little crystal pebbles of, of cornstarch. Boy, that smells good. I can smell, man, you can smell everything. Cornstarch in there. Yeah, and it just about instantly thickened this up. You guys can't see it. So it's reduced by about an inch so far. I want to reduce it a little bit more. All these pieces of onion are starting to fall apart. And 
Ah, looks so good. Looks so good. Here, you guys can see that, but man. Okay, let's have a taste. So the potatoes are probably not done yet. Let's find out. Oh, they are. Oh, okay, that's nice. Oh, what camera? Which camera is the best? I guess the best place for me to eat this is right here. So this is this is the stew. It needs to thicken a little bit more. But let's try some of this. That's pretty good. If I do say so myself. Here's the other key to cooking. I like my own cooking a lot. <laughs> mm, man. That's super hearty. Super satisfying. I know it's a big time investment. It's been a couple hours I've been doing this today. But. After I kill the stream, I'll walk the dog and uh, come back. I'll kill the heat on this probably while I'm walking the dog. Put it out into my deli containers um, and then let it cool. And then put lids on them and then my family are going to be coming over in dribs and drabs tonight to pick stuff up. And because these guys, it's like 25 bucks for 48 of these. Um, it's probably a product of China. That's this is the one cup size, which is what eight ounces. Um, they're great because they're airtight. You can freeze stuff, and it makes you know this distribution of the food. Really easy because and then I can just like I made lasagna, I made mac and cheese, I made chili, I made meatloaf yesterday. That's going to go in a bunch of different packages for my kids and my act. And then that will go in their freezer at home. Hmm. That's really good. Um, hmm. And then, um, and then uh, if they get sick, like the whole point, the reason I'm doing this is I don't do this all the time. The whole point that I'm doing this is that I study emergency management, right? So a big part of emergency management is the idea of being prepared. And being prepared is as simple as making sure you have meds for the next two or three weeks, making sure you have food for two or three weeks, making sure that you have, if you have a need for distilled water, that you've got distilled water, two or three weeks worth of distilled water on hand. And this is like an all the, all the time thing. This isn't just when there's an emergency. But it's just in case, you know? And this way, because we don't know who's going to get sick or how they're going to get sick or if they'll get sick, this way, the people who are important to me, wow, I got it way up here, um, they don't have to worry about feeding themselves, you know? Like, they will have freezers full of food in easily bite sized containers like meal size containers that they can just bring out and defrost. And if they're sick, I mean, you know what it's like being sick. Like, if you get the flu, you don't want to fucking cook. You don't want to make anything. You want to lie in bed and feel bad for yourself. You know, that's what I want to do. So this is easy. Now we all have food, reliable source of food. It's healthy, it's homemade. It's really importantly balanced. Um, other than the mac and cheese, in terms of like fruits and vegetables and, and um, protein. It's not too heavy on the salt. 
It's not spicy. And they're going to have healthy food that is going to get them by, right? And that's all I'm trying to do. I mean, cooking's not hard, man. My like cooking... Here's the thing about cooking. Cooking is like anything. You have to do it over and over and over again, and you have to be okay with fucking it up. Because when you fail, you learn, and you just try again. That's it. And you learn what you like, and you learn what you're good at, you know? Like, I know how to make creme brulee. I'm not going to do it all the time. Kind of vamping here while I'm waiting for the pressure cooker to get going. I really want to eat more of that beef stew. It's really good. Oh! Huh. So it's official, my dream has closed. So I'm gonna get, I'm actually gonna get her to Offering to do workouts via Skype. I got like, okay, thanks, Pervy Jedi. I don't know what this means. What does hype mean? Is that an emoji? <laughs> <laughs> or is that just your 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 icon, man? Yeah, I don't know. Pervy Jedi is a pretty good name. Pervy Jedi, cool. All right. Okay, so, I don't know if you can see this, but, like, the cornstarch is actually thickening up quite beautifully. It's getting this, like, sheen on the top. Here. I dish out a little bit more of my, my yumminess here. Actually, yeah, I am going to turn that off. So, probably going to be ending the stream here pretty soon. But that's a little better idea of... I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. Did I not give myself any meat? I didn't, <laughs> barely gave myself any meat. That's alright. It's really good, son. Mmm. <clears throat> You know what would be hilarious is that people, maybe somebody does this, my knowledge of what's on the internet is infinitesimal like everyone else's, but is there actually a channel where people cook, hopefully not intentionally, and just make shitty food, and taste it, and are disgusted by their own food? That'd be so, that'd be a bummer, man. Oh my god, that's hot. Okay. Like, that would be a bummer. It would be a total bummer to put all this time and effort into into making something and then be super disappointed. I don't know if I... I don't think that's entertaining. I don't know. What do I know about anything? GG. Hey, man. <laughs> Speaking of GG, if you want to hit me up... Well, it's on Xbox. Um, I'm on Xbox probably less than I'm on PlayStation, but yeah, I play playing Ori right now, but I play Destiny 2 with my boy Mitch and Brandon. Play Overwatch. I played The Division on PS4. 
vision two. If I could cook for all of you guys, I would, but I can't. So if you don't have a pressure cooker, like an Instant Pot, what's happening here is there's an element down here, so it's heating this up, right? And there's a little bit of steam coming out, but what'll happen is as this heats up, it's going to start boiling and producing steam, and as the steam uh, increases and the volume of steam increases, there's a valve here, that's the release valve. But basically, I've, I've cut off the steam with this. So what happens is once it gets to a specific pressure that it's sensed on the inside, uh, it just this countdown starts going down, and it just cooks because it's boiling and also under pressure. Um, pressure cookers in my parents' generation, terrifying. Because they would explode. They would just... It would just it would just blow up, cover your whole. I mean, people got injured by him. My dad tried to make moonshine once when he was in the army with a pressure cooker. It did not go well. According to my mom, I wasn't there. He had a still. He made his own wine out of. What do you make his wine out of? Rhubarb. Oh my god. Some kind of absurd thing to make wine out of. He made wine out of rhubarb. Apparently it was very strong. And if you were a military guy and your only goal was to get fucked up on wine, it was very effective, but it stank to high heaven. anything. Ask me anything about Canada. Ask me anything about COVID. I will tell you the truth or tell you I don't know. I guess I'm not working out tomorrow. Normally I get up and go to the gym. So I guess I'm cleaning the house. Johnny man, deli containers, white savers. This may be the greatest single invention of mankind other than yoga pants. Yeah, 
Right on. Right on, right on, right on. Pressurize, please. Is it too full? All right, I'm going to kill the stream uh, just because I think this is going to take forever because it's got, I don't know, whatever size, whatever quarts, so the six quarts of soup in it to actually pressurize. So and I'm going to feed my dog and, uh, and that'll be that. So thank you for joining me. Go out and cook for your friends and family. Mitchell, I will get on the intranets and play video games, and we can <laughs> we can hang out. Just give me a call. <laughs> um, but yeah, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Hopefully, I'll cook again soon. If not, I'll just be on the intranets playing video games. All right, have a good one. Thanks for watching.